Cycling is a must for every tank. Cycling a tank is simply establishing a colony of beneficial bacteria that converts common toxic compounds into less toxic forms. So without the cycle happening, water won't be safe for fish, corals, or invertebrates. Denitrifying bacteria live on pretty much every surface in your tank, including rocks, substrate, and plants. Having porous filtration media, known as biological media, allows more of that denitrifying bacteria to populate, enabling you to have a heavier bioload. Adding fish to an aquarium that hasn't been cycled is not a good idea, and survival is unlikely. There are three nitrogenous compounds to be aware of, ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. Ammonia is released when anything organic starts to break down, including waste, uneaten food, and dead fish or detritus. Ammonia is deadly for animals in your aquarium, for it can deteriorate living tissue and suffocate fish in a matter of hours. This is where bacteria come to the rescue. The first bacteria will consume the ammonia, reducing its levels to zero by converting it into nitrite as a waste product. Nitrite is less toxic than ammonia, but is still undesirable for fish, corals, and other invertebrates. A second strain of bacteria takes nitrite and converts it into nitrate as the final step. A low level of nitrate is considered safe, although too much is considered undesirable. To remove excess nitrate, water changes are essential, as well as other means of nutrient export. To cycle a tank, you have to begin by adding a source of ammonia for the population of bacteria to consume. This can be done by ghost feeding, which is adding a small amount of fish food into the water even when there aren't fish. Some people add a fish at this point to produce the waste needed, although nowadays it's considered cruel and unnecessary. If you want a head start on the cycle, you can add bottled bacteria cultures or filtration media from an established tank. Just be careful of contamination. A complete cycle is not determined by a length of time, but test results. Using a test kit, test ammonia every few days to monitor any changes. Ammonia will rise, and as it starts to fall, test nitrite to observe any changes. Test ammonia and nitrite until they both spike, and then reach zero, confirming a successful cycle. If you were to plot your test results, it will look like a spike in ammonia followed by a spike in nitrite, and then a plateau of nitrate. When ammonia and nitrite levels fall to zero parts per million, the cycle is complete. This process usually takes about a month, but it could take a longer or shorter amount of time depending on a range of factors. New tanks, even after cycling, can still be vulnerable to ammonia spikes. This is because fish will introduce much more waste into the aquarium than what was being produced before. If a spike does occur when there's a fish in the tank, dilute it immediately by performing a water change. In general, to prevent these ammonia spikes, add your livestock incrementally so the population of bacteria can slowly increase to match the amount of waste being produced. Also, make sure you don't exceed your bioload or your population of denitrifying bacteria may not be able to keep up with all the waste being produced. Finally, make sure you properly clean your biological media in a way that doesn't kill the bacteria present. We hope you now realize why you must cycle your aquarium no matter how much you want to stock it. It's crucial to colonize the needed bacteria in order to keep the three nitrogenous compounds at safe levels. With all this knowledge in mind, you can properly set up your aquarium without putting your beloved pets at risk.